Hello guys, welcome back to our channel. My name is Balram Prasad and I am working with Microsoft as a senior software engineer. So today we are going to learn about Azure Batch and also we are going to run our first batch job using Azure Portal. And Azure Batch is a service used for large scale parallel processing and if you need high performance computing you want to do that one then you can run this on Azure Batch, this task and these jobs. So when we create Azure batch service, we need to define that compute pool that how many nodes we are going to use and what operating system it will contain, which kind of virtual machine it will contain, how many cores are there. And then we can use that one. And instead of managing this one, batch API is there, which we can integrate with the command line tool or somewhere we are doing all this automation. We can do that one also. And we will see that one, how to do that one from portal first. So why Azure Batch is required? So generally Azure Batch is very good with parallel workloads. If you have some task or if you have some application which is running using parallel computing on a lot of different tasks which can run in same time without touching each other, then this is a good candidate to use that one. Example could be that if you are running the financial risk modeling into Monte Carlo simulations, right? You want to do some VFX and 3D image rendering and there are tons of uh, images which you want to render. You can have thousands of nodes and tasks which can run in the same time. It does not have to run the sequencing, right? You can do image analysis and processing. You can do media transcoding. If you have some image coming or if you have some media coming like video files, you want to trans like a general example can happen that you are recording something and you want to a transcode into different file formats like a small or medium or a high HD sizes or or other things then you can do that one also genetic sequence analysis we can do we can do optical character recognition or we can do software text and sometimes we generally use for data ingestion processing and ATL operations also using some custom script and other things that also we can do. We will see some of the examples in this demo. We will create a very basic command line script and we will run that one. In next few demos, we will see some of the different things using this Azure batch service. So how this works, right? A common scenario that batch is that it can scale for parallel workload. And then if you want to render, as I told you, that uh, such as rendering of images of 3D scenes, right? There are tons of 3D, 3D scenes you want to render that one. Then you can use this pool of compute node and this pool can be your render farm. There are, if you suppose you have thousands of nodes, then you can treat as a render farm that will provide 10, 1000 or even 1000 sub core up to rendering job, right? Generally, if you see that one, when we create Azure batch, we will create Azure compute nodes and then inside compute node, we will create a job for any purpose. If you want to run some jobs like R script or some other C sharp script or anything, then it can have different tasks around that one. And that's how it runs, right? And then uh, there will be a central location where this input files and output file will be stored. Some storage account we can connect with that Azure batch where our input script, input files, different input file like in case of MP4 files, MP4 file will be stored way over there and we will have some script over there. And then once um, this task is finished, it will upload that, that same place as output or where we configure that one, right? So this is how it works. Basically, broadly, we can say that it goes ahead and download input file and application and it runs on these nodes. And, and once the task is finished, it uploads the output into that storage. So that is what it is. And we are going to quickly see that how to create the Azure batch and how we can run a simple command in Azure batch. So for this demo, we are into Azure subscription and resource group. And now we will create Azure batch. Let's go ahead and click on the create button. And when we go to Azure marketplace, then we can search that with Azure batch. So Azure batch, there are multiple options, but we need pure Azure base, not the rendering options. So let's click on Azure batch. And uh, we will go with this batch service. So this batch service says that Microsoft Azure batch is fully managed service, cloud service that provides jobs related to compute resource management for developer, right? We talked about that one into our PPT section. Let's go ahead and click on create button. 
now it is asking that what is the batch account name we want to put let's put that and this will be fully qualified domain name so let's keep into east us and we can optionally provide in a storage account so let's select that storage account where we will give that uh, our uh, jobs and other things whatever jobs we will write we can put over there so we can provide this is often later we can also configure and this will be only selected which is location is in east us and blob storage and will come and uh, adf gen 2 will come so with the hierarchical name space that can come can be selected so this is what it is saying that when authentication mode is equals to a storage key or we can use batch managed uh, batch account uh, managed identity both is okay for demo but if you are going into production system generally you use managed identity and other things so let's keep that way right now we can also assign user managed identity but i'm not going to keep that one right now let's go to advanced section where it says that whatever the identity type we talked about that one so let's keep my system managed identity and batch service pool allocation mode is batch service so let's keep all this and authentication mode is auth identity directory how we are going to connect shared key and task authentication token also it can provide either we want to access that azure batch with public uh, endpoints or we can select as a private or we can go with private endpoints also so that's where the setting is there we will not touch right now we will go with public option tagging where we provide that which kind of resources what is this resources for development environment production and other things so that is what is let's keep the default one now validation is passed let's click on create button it will take some time and then it will come up right now deployment in progress let's wait for a few minutes now deployment is succeeded let's go to resources and see what are the different options we can see so if we go this is that uh, normal home page for similar type of services in Azure where we can see the some of the data which how many tasks and other things there what is the node status and other things if we go into pools we we can add the pools right now there is no pools in this one so we will add that one if we want to see how many jobs are there and other things job schedules we can have schedule and other things so let's go and here also application setting is there where we can manage our application we can have 200 application we can install we will see how to create first that pools and other things now let's go into pool section right uh, pools is where we will define that what kind of compute node it will have if i click and add pool it will give that let me put the name first and depending upon uh, what is that uh, detail we want to put that one image type it is going to take from marketplace all the publisher i'm going to choose right now that okay it will be microsoft windows server we can have azure batch and other things but let, let me select and this will be windows server and let's keep that one right now with 2019 uh, databases there are more on 2020 data center call a small disk let's go with the 2019 data center call a small so now all this is there right we can have this um, encryption configuration and other things but right now i'm going not going to keep that one so i will go ahead and keep that one so let's go ahead and if we go now this vm size what vm size we want to have and depending upon that one your process how much process you want to do the fast and what is the size you want for memory and the pricing is going to be charged and based on this one so that's where you have to be balanced on that one and you want to fix or auto scale if you want to have a dedicated node how many node and other things so we can have select that okay let's keep that one right now two only uh, because it will charge right now based on that one right so to, um, and then we can go ahead and keep all this option optional settings that what is the user account task leading policy what is the policy and other things all this we can do and after going all these details we can go ahead and you can put that uh, this uh, whole compute nodes all the compute network into some virtual network or some we can have connectivity from subnet and other things we can go ahead and do that one or we can say that oh okay let me do optional ones that is default it is going to take so it will do all these things let me click on okay 
right now pool has been created so if we go into pool we can see the details of that one it is resizing right now and uh, it will take some time to resize and come up all these beams and other things so if we go into node section uh, right now there is no node it is just creating all internally so let's wait for a few minutes right now if we see that allocation state is steady after resizing that one it is still doing that one it will go into uh, now it, if we go into this section and node size node heat map inside node we can see that now it is idle uh, both the beams whatever we said now we are ready to go ahead and create the task and other things so if we go back and into job section let's create a simple command related task so let me put that job id let's put that to my job my first job right and we can select that pool which pool it is going to run so we can select this pool which we created right now and then we can go ahead and this is job we can create that okay now in next section we will create the task so job is created let's go inside the job and now we can go ahead inside task and we can create the task in this job what is the task is going to be that right my first task right let's put that one and based on the settings let's simply run that one command line uh, all in this uh, our command line this is the command we are going to run that okay set ag batch in timeout on uh, is 90 right so that is what we are going to do and we will see that how it is running and then we will see how to see output that is what basically we are going to do in this demo let me submit this task okay now if we go and refresh this one now if you see it is running right now let's see what happens once it starts running right right now if you see there are two outputs here file is started coming it is still running so i will wait for that completed section and then we can be given 90 seconds so it will be one and a half minutes so i'm just waiting for that now it has run and completed so if we go into this uh, files on the node let's see on this one that what was the output and we can see this is the output when it ran the command so this is how we can run the command we can configure to save output into our storage and we can do all of the things uh, this is what i wanted to show you in this demo where we can submit one small task to azure batch and see how uh, if any error could have happened uh, we can go and see in standard error.txt uh, this output is here that is what i wanted to do in this demo in next demo we will do something more with azure batch so if you wanted to learn more about azure batch and integration with azure data factory and other things do watch our next videos thank you Thank mm -hmm. you.